What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now the title of this video says iPhone 15 Pro Images and Leaks, so we're gonna start with that. And this photo may not be all that sexy, but this is what is believed to be the first look at the USB-C port on an actual iPhone 15 Pro chassis with the port in clear view that was shared on Twitter by leaker unknown Z21. I mean, it's not shocking. We pretty much know what a USB-C port change will look like, but the image also is the first time that we've seen the reported smoother curves on the edges of the iPhone 15 Pro as well. And I've always been a fan of smoother edges versus the harder corners that end up just getting covered by a case anyways. Now the reports also claim that Apple will be moving to titanium metal instead of stainless steel. So this could also be a first look at that more brushed metal surface that has a titanium like finish on it up close. Now the entire iPhone 15 and 15 Pro lineup is expected to get a new USB-C port and the iPhone 15 Pro Max will as well, but these new design aspects that we can really pull from this photo will reportedly only come to iPhone 15 Pro models. And that's not all we have on the new iPhone 15 Pro because 9 to 5 Mac has reportedly been able to get CAD design files similar to the ones given by Apple to factories to make phone cases before the launch. And then you got renders guru Ian Zelbo who partnered with them to make these renders based on those CAD files. And you check them out, the first change in these renders is a recognition of a USB-C port instead of lightning port on the bottom, which Apple has what, used for over 10 years now. And we have been expecting this change for the iPhone this year. But the other things to point out, we have again the curvature of the edges create more of a smoother transition between the glass and the frame this time around. And it really has some of those MacBook Pro and MacBook Air vibes, and it would make sense to have a common design language between their products, even down to the curved edges. Now, the other thing to notice here is that the camera booty bump on the backside appears to be thicker than before. The layout looks to be the same, right? You have the three camera lens, but it's got more junk in the trunk, and that could mean an improved larger image sensor for the 15 Pro. Now, the renders don't confirm if we will indeed get capacitive touch buttons for the volume rockers and power buttons, which has been rumored, but the body of the device is reportedly a few millimeters smaller with an even thinner bezel than before, so we could see the same 6.1 inch display, but in a smaller body. And then everyone, we love those thinner bezels on an iPhone. Now the dynamic island looks to be the same with no major changes in its size or placement, but these renders are based on early leaked CAD files and this is not final, but it does give us some insight into what the new iPhone 15 Pro might look like. I didn't say real because it's only real until Apple announces it, even though everyone's saying these are real. Uh, are, are they real? All right, now I know half of you are saying, eh, basically looks like the same, and the other half of you are saying, well, it's kind of different, and it is new, so I must buy one. But we're still many months away until the September timeframe for the iPhone announcements. And then that iPhone Ultra model, right, at that top, top tier that we talked about recently, don't expect that this year, but potentially in 2024. All right, the iPhone, it isn't dropping anytime soon, but what could we also see from Apple this spring? Well, how about what we won't see first, right? The latest report from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says Apple has delayed the launch of their AR VR headset, which was originally expected to debut this spring and is now targeting WWDC in June for its unveiling to the public. Now, there were rumblings that we might see it in April and then they would open it up for developers in June, but the rumored Apple Reality Pro headset is now set for Apple's worldwide developer conference in we know there's really no rush to release it before they're ready. And if you've been watching my channel, right? I just recently got my hands on the PlayStation VR 2 already. We're still waiting for its official launch on the 22nd. You got several key games like Gran Turismo 7 and No Man's Sky getting VR updates, but the experience with it, the haptics, the graphics, the fidelity, the eye tracking, these are awesome. And being tethered to your PS5 with the cable, it's not a big deal if it's delivering an experience like that. But when you think about VR, it always comes down to the software with these devices. And we know that Apple might be preparing unique experiences for their headset, but they also really need games for it. That's what a majority of people are using VR for. And even if Apple wants to have a different approach, they still need games. They even recently held an invite only press event for media and some influencers in New York just to showcase gaming on the Mac and Apple Arcade as well. Now, I'll be the first to say Apple has recently done better getting titles like Resident Evil Village on the Mac. You got No Man's Sky, that's coming to the Mac later this year, but these are titles making it to the Mac over a year later than their console counterparts. Apple also showed off Call of Duty Warzone, 
coming to the iPhone later this year at the event, but they still have their beef with Fortnite. They don't have Valorant. They have Roblox and Minecraft, but they need the flagship franchises for people to actually consider jumping over when they launch at the same time as the consoles. And I know that's still not too realistic because of budgets and the investment game studios have to make to do that. And I will commend Second Dinner, right? That team for making Marvel Snap on the Mac, even if I'm normally playing it on my iPhone or iPad, I'm really good at it. But that game has been dangerous because it's so addicting for me. And we know not all games can do that, but that's really what we need to see more of with this connectivity between iOS and macOS games. These killer titles launch at the same time as their other counterparts. But, you know, we talk about games. Let's get back to the Apple headset. Will we get Beat Saber? Were we going to get like Super Hot VR, Pistol Whip, or Walkabout Mini Golf? Like, if you know, you know. So we're going to find out what Apple shows us in June if they if that target reveal doesn't move again. And then we'll finally see Apple's headset, hopefully, at WWDC 2023 at its rumored $3,000 price point. Now, a recent report from display analyst Ross Young says that Apple has started production for a new 15.5-inch MacBook Air this month with plans to launch it in early April. Now, I have made my case for it multiple times here, and it fits perfectly in that Apple laptop line in between the MacBook Air and the base model MacBook Pro. Now, Young says it's even possible that an announcement or pre-order could happen before April with the expectation that this will come loaded with an M2 chip, and we know an M3 chip with a new three nanometer process, more efficient, more powerful, could show up this year, but it has yet to be officially announced. But would they release the M3 with this larger Air? Uh, it may not even be ready in time. I mean, it sure doesn't feel like it, but there are reports that Apple is planning to release an updated 13 inch model MacBook Air with the M3 chip later this year. But whatever, M2 or M3, uh, for me, this is a machine that I would seriously look at for just a more powerful portable right? More than enough in a laptop on the go, even if it's expected to not come with ProMotion because the word Pro, that's only for Pro machines. It's in the name. Duh. All right. If you're waiting for a new iMac, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman has squashed any hope or dreams of that happening. He says Apple will wait to release one with an M3 chip, which is yet to be announced and is targeting late 2023 at the earliest. The new iMac was a killer home computer and I loved all the different colors it came in. And it was easily one of my favorite machines of 2021. And in case you missed it, we've already talked about how Apple's rumored 27 inch display with mini LED and ProMotion that has been rumored is not expected to launch in the first quarter of this year. And there are no signs of it entering mass production right now. So that means a release is nowhere close to happening according to Ross Young. And then in my favorite report in things that need to happen from Apple, Apple is working on a docking accessory for the iPad that would allow it to be used as a smart home display, similar to what Google showed off with their recent Pixel tablet. Now, Google is going to release a charging dock with a speaker that magnetically attaches to their Pixel tablet and allows you to use the entire system like a Nest Hub Max. Oh, boom. Well, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says Apple is working on a similar type of product for the iPad next year, and they absolutely should be Apple. They've also been rumored to be working on a new OS called Home OS as it keeps on making, you know, bigger moves in the smart home space. And this home OS could be and should be the software used with this iPad and speaker dot combo product in the future, which clearly they were inspired by another company. Like when you saw, you're like, why isn't Apple doing this? Well, they're doing it now. All right. That is going to do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video without the stuffy nose and sniffles. Peace and love.